Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. Today, we are going to do something just for fun in this Christmas spirit. So um, lately, I started working on a very simple markup language for GUIs. And it's called GML for GUI markup language. And um, we can take a look at how the text editor looks, for example. So here is the GML file that describes the text editor application UI. And it's basically um, a replacement for the JSON-based thing we did a while back, but this one is sort of streamlined for um, developer convenience rather than parser convenience. So um, you have, you instantiate um, widgets with an at character, so at and then any widget you like, and then within that widget you can set widget properties with property name colon and then the value, and you can also instantiate child widgets by just um, at widget name here. So it nests very nicely and um, it's used currently to create this UI here, the file manager UI, and the uh, browser UI. And um, I think this is pretty neat, but one thing I really miss is um, being able to see sort of live what I'm doing. And right now I have to recompile and to be able to see the, um, the changes that I make. But what if we had just a simple playground application where I could type this GML and see the interface come to life um, immediately. Uh, so that's what we're going to make right now, uh, just a GML playground app. So uh, let's see. Let's call it, um, maybe we'll just call it the playground for now. And what do we need for that? We just bring with us CMake file from here. Okay, so main playground. Oh, do we have an icon? We don't have an icon right now. Um, so sorry about that. No icon yet. Maybe we'll make an icon later. Who knows? Uh, and then, of course, we have to add it here. So. Okay. Dev tools, playground, main CPP. So, how is this thing going to work? Well, it shouldn't be too tricky. I'm going to have to update my copyright template soon to say 2021, um, but not quite yet. So, for this, this is really, really simple, the way that we um, the way that we do this. So the way you load a GML um, file, by the way, is that you just say you create an empty widget and then you say widget load from GML. And then um, we will parse the GML at runtime and instantiate all of the widgets and set all the properties and stuff. So it's completely dynamic, completely runtime which um, you could you could compile it statically into C++, but the fact that it is um, runtime means that we can do some interesting things with it later on. Anyway, what we need here is... Uh, actually, we probably don't even need a GML parser. We just need a GUI window and an application and actually you know what let's bring in a text editor and a splitter yes i think those are the things that we need here so gui application construct okay um, <laughs> okay, remembering the basics. So, let's make a window, a GUI window construct. Uh, 
window set title GML playground and let's resize the window to 800 by 600 maybe something like that and then let's set a main widget so here we'll just use a plain GUI widget nothing spectacular and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a actually what we're going to do is we're going to split the view horizontally and we'll have a text editor on the left and the result on the right um, so the main widget should actually be a splitter horizontal splitter and then into the splitter we'll put an editor GUI text editor and we'll call it the preview let's say and the preview will be where we actually put the result of the GML so uh, editor on change and then here what we want to do whenever the text in the editor changes we want to I guess actually we want to like throw away whatever's in the preview right now. Um, do we have like remove all children? We don't have remove all children. That's a little weird. Um, so I guess we can hack that. Um, wait, how do we remove all children from a widget? I don't normally do this. <laughs> um, so let's see, while preview has while preview ch ch children is not empty. Preview children first remove from parent. Oh, that's so weird. Um, this is not a very expressive way to remove all children. Yeah, can definitely improve that with some API addition. Uh, okay, so we've removed all the kids. And then all we got to do next is preview, load from GML, um, editor text. OK. Let's see if this will work. I cannot pragma once in a CPP file. What am I doing? I mean, I can, but I shouldn't. Playground. Okay, let's try this. GUI widget uh, layout is GUI vertical box layout. And can we put something in here? GUI button text. Hello. Oh, dude, it works. Okay, so now let's make more buttons. Look at that. That's pretty sweet. Um, and then let's mess with the spacing here. Oh, check it out. We can change the spacing live. This is so awesome. Um, man, this is this is finally, I think finally going to make um, editing GUIs a bit nicer because I keep, I keep thinking that, oh, I should work more on Hack Studio and build the uh, sort of point and click GUI development thing in here. Um, let's see if I can open that. Uh, this sort of thing, which in theory is nice, right? But in practice, I don't actually use this thing. Um, it's been just sitting here for, I don't know, six, eight months or something, because this isn't how I build GUIs. In practice, I want to build them in text. Um, and now that we can actually do this in a way, I think integrating this type of thing in Hack Studio would be way, way better. Um, and then we could sort of build this type of functionality maybe on top of that. But if the base of it is um, this simple markup language and a live preview, I think that would be a lot, um, lot more something I would actually use. So. This makes me happy already. Um, 
So this works pretty well. So we'll imagine that I wanted to change the layout type. Boom. So very, very good for prototyping, right? Can we change the um, say margins? Like 10, 10, 10, 10. Oh, that's so nifty. And what if I wanted to put something else in the middle? Make it a label instead? Boom. Not a problem. Or a text editor? Not a problem either. <laughs> that's so cool. This is so cool. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so you know what else would be cool is if this thing had syntax highlighting. Um, but not to worry. Um, before I got distracted by all the security stuff that happened because of the CTF last week, um, I was just messing around with this. So I actually do have a syntax highlighting thingy prepared. Um, because if you use GML in text editor, it actually already knows about this. So we have GML syntax highlighting. So let's just enable that in the playground right away. It shouldn't be any trouble. GML syntax highlighter, boom. And then all we have to do is say editor set syntax highlighter, make ourselves a GUI GML syntax highlighter. Boom. Mm -hmm. And, oh, cool, okay. So let's make some fun UI here. Um, just, just to play around. Vertical box layout, we'll start right with that. So as you can see here, um, you can assign a widget to a property. Um, and if you type a widget immediately here with no property name before it, then it becomes a child widget. So um, we assign a, um, a layout object. So actually it's, it's not a widget that you're instantiating, but it's any core object. And this is um, dynamically looked up at runtime. Um, so we have this thing called registrations, um, which uh, you can add. Uh, and any widgets that any widget that is registered with this mechanism can be instantiated from GML. So you should actually be able to instantiate like a web view or something like that if you want to as well. So, in fact, let's let's make a browser UI um, very quickly here. So, can we make a tab widget tab? Maybe we didn't actually include that one. Oh, no, no, it is registered here. Okay, okay. Tab widget. And I, I don't think I can make tabs from the GML, but we can at least put stuff inside of it. So just give him a layout. Or screw that, let's just make a regular window UI. So we'll start with a toolbar up top. Toolbar container. And inside of that, we put a toolbar. Poof, cool. Okay, and then under there, we put a text editor. And then at the bottom, let's put a GUI status bar. Look at that. Now, doesn't that look pretty sweet? Um, and then imagine that we wanted to have sort of um, like a left-hand side pane here that would be um, splittable so that you could like resize it. So let's try to do that. So we put that, split that with the text editor. So horizontal splitter here. And then in the splitter, we put a GUI uh, widget down the left side. 
and check it out. Now we have this kind of getup. And maybe we can preferred with, can we do this? Um, so horizontal size policy fixed. Yeah, okay, so we can set sort of the starting width, but it's still resizable. Okay, and then it doesn't auto indent. That's a bit annoying. We should we should just turn on auto indentation. Mm -mm -mm. Can we just can we just editor set automatic indentation true? Yes. Okay, let's start over. Let's see how this goes. I'm typing out the UI again. But, uh, toolbar container. Yeah, this feels a lot better with auto indentation. Ploof. Okay, and then horizontal splitter. Text editor. Oh, cool. Yeah, so like while it doesn't parse properly, then we don't show anything here, but I feel like that maybe that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, because the moment we fix the parse, it's good again. Can we preload this sample text? Cool. Okay. Hmm. Status bar. Okay. That is very, very cool. So, obviously, right now, this is only capable of building up a UI. Like, you can't do any kind of logic in here. It's just um, building the structure and setting properties. But that is such a huge part of making a UI anyway, so I think that's okay. So I should note that when you actually use this in an application, the way that you access these various things from C++ then is that you give them names. So here, for example, you would say name toolbar. And then uh, when you instantiate this thing in your C++ code, you would say something like toolbar is um, widget find descendant by name toolbar, something like that. And it does a lookup for you. Um, and there are, uh, there are some improvements I want to make to this mechanism to make it a little bit more convenient and more strongly typed, but that's the basic idea. So you go and find them by name. Um, let's see if we can make a web view here. So that would be like web, um, in process web view. Do we have that in process web view? Oh, we didn't link with libweb. Yeah, so that's not going to work. Yeah, it says here class in process web view not registered. Um, but if you link with libweb, then it will be available. Um, but yeah, this is essentially the tool I wanted to make today. Um, just to have something where you can easily play with this type of stuff. And then going forward, um, I think I think this is starting to get good enough that we can actually start using it properly and iterating on it. The JSON implementation did not feel user-friendly or developer-friendly enough, but this kind of does. And then it also kind of highlights that the, um, the layout mechanisms are pretty limiting. And um, the fact that we have like these two size policies and width and heights, um, it's allowed us to build the UIs that we have currently, but it, it does sort of limit what we can do with them. So 
I would like to expand on those concepts a bit going forward. Um, but one thing at a time. Anyway, today this was the little project, so let's commit this. Dev tools and a simple GML playground application. This allows you to, this app, to edit GML and see the results live. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Okay, so very short video today, but uh, something quite nice. And yeah, I, I think this could turn into something really cool. So thank you very much for hanging out today and stopping by, and I will see you next time. Bye.